Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to the talk, Building Your First Bosch Release. So we're going to talk about what is Bosch, what are releases, and how to build them. So what is Bosch? Bosch is an open source cluster management tool developed and used by Pivotal and other companies to efficiently manage large-scale systems like cloud funding. It can handle infrastructure provisioning, release engineering, configuration management, and deployment lifecycle of a complex distributed system. Several people asked me uh, during CF Summit uh, if Bosch is something like Chef or Puppet. Well, some features of Bosch can be compared to configuration management systems, but it does much more than just configuration management. It can manage deployments that span hundreds of VMs, providing all required tooling for release engineering, rolling cluster updates, operating system updates, real-time monitoring, and recovery. It can utilize your infrastructure efficiently by provisioning, allocating, and releasing resources for your deployment in a controlled manner. Rolling updates is a hard problem to solve. So many systems leave it up to operator to figure out the proper order of updates and uh, minimize the number of disruptions to production systems. Bosch deployment manifest is completely declarative. The system itself takes care of understanding what is currently running in your cloud, what do you intend to run, and figures out the best way of running updates minimizing the number of disruptions. If something did not change, it's not going to get updated. Only affected node will be touched. Release engineering is part of Bosch. It is opinionated about structure and life cycle of the release. It provides required tooling for creating and updating your releases. It is easy to iterate on your releases while developing and create production releases. Everything is fingerprinted and incremental. If something did not change, it's not going to get included in release, rebuilt, and deployed. <coughs> um, Bosch can perform all kinds of complex updates, including operating system updates. So operator can specify the OS image version he wants to, to deploy, and Bosch will take care of recreating every node in a deployment with the base OS image, with the new version of base OS image. Um, Bosch provides a built-in mechanism for detecting potential infrastructure problems. It provides recovery mechanisms for failing services and inconsistent infrastructure state. As you can see, Bosch takes a holistic approach to managing your deployments. It is a prescribed solution that will take care of your complex workloads every step of the way. Let's uh, quickly take a look how Bosch works. So the main Bosch component is a director. Director exposes a RESTful API that allows you to manage your deployments, manage your releases, get the current state of your deployment, and perform other administrative tasks. You configure Director with the cloud config, which contains your cloud provider properties that define types of resources that your deployments can use, like networks, VM types, disks, Director interacts with cloud providers via something we call cloud provider interface, or CPI. CPI abstracts away infrastructure details to a well-defined interface. It has methods like create VM, create disk, attach disk. This way, if you have your Amazon or GC or any other infrastructure, you can make it work with Bosch by just implementing the CPI. We officially support CPIs for AWS OpenStack, vSphere, and other infrastructures. Um, but since it's all open source, you can um, add support for your infrastructure 
by implementing the CPI. Bosch creates VMs from a set of predefined uh, templates, which we call stem cells. You can think of a stem cell as AMI for AWS, for example. And at its core, stem cell is a base OS image with some hardening on top of it and Bosch agent. Bosch agent is a process that runs on every VM. We officially support stem cells for multiple infrastructures. You can uh, download them uh, at Bosch.io website and uh, they constantly released with new security updates to kernel and base OS packages. So once VM uh, that was created from stem cell boots up, Bosch agent starts running on that VM. And agent bootstraps itself, it fetches information provided by CPI, and that information tells agent how to interact with the rest of the system. So once agent is ready, it starts reporting to director and director starts issuing commands to the agent to configure VM in a certain way, like configure networks, set up disks, and install software. Agents are also responsible for supervising jobs that are running on that VM, and also perform some housekeeping, like uh, rolling over debug logs, uh, reporting resource usages, and etc. cetera. Um, in order for software to be runnable on Bosch, it needs to be packaged into release. Uh, manifest is what it ties it all together. Uh, manifest defines how, uh, your deployment layout, what releases to deploy, and what stem cells to use. So let's quickly take a look at deployment manifest. So manifest consists of the following sections. It has some deployment information, list of stem cells to use to provision VMs, releases to deploy, update section defines how to perform a rolling update of your deployment, and instance groups define what software to install, what stem cell to use to provision VM, and what jobs from releases to install on that VM. So what is release? Let's say you have some source files, and in order to deploy those source files, uh, you need to package them into release. This is how Bosch understands how to run your software, how to deploy it. Release contains all the bits that needed to be deployed, like your package contents, installation scripts, and configuration file templates. So every release uh, consists of the following parts. It has your software source files, it has packages that define how to install your software, and it has jobs that specify how to run your software. So let's take a look at example, uh, really simple release. Let's say you have some Go application. Um, you will need to include its source files in a, in a source directory. Then in order to install the, those files, you will need to provide a Golang binary. So usually releases live in Git repos, uh, and large objects are not included in the release itself. Uh, instead, they're referenced as some blob store identifiers like S3 or Swift. And uh, Bosch will take care of uh, downloading those uh, binaries and including them in your release uh, when, once you're gonna create your release for the first time and then it's gonna cache them for subsequent use. Also, you need to provide a packaging script where you will specify how to install your software. And then you'll have to provide uh, the startup script that will define how to run your software on Bosch. So let's take a look what Bosch will do, uh, how it's gonna deploy your release. So it will start 
by compiling packages that were updated. It detects what source files were changed. It will create a predefined number of compilation VMs, and it will start compiling all your source packages that were changed. Um, packages might depend on other packages, and Bosch will take care of resolving dependency graph and making sure to provide all the packages that your dependencies need uh, on the node that runs them. So once the packages are compiled, Bosch will store them in its blob store. One of the nice things about this approach uh, is that Bosch only compiles packages once, and then it distributes them across all the nodes that need those packages. So this way, scaling up the number of instances is not slowed down by package compilation, because Bosch already has all the packages pre-compiled in its blob store. So um, release engineering is completely automated in the sense that if you change one file, then every package that is using that file and every job that is using that package uh, is going to be rebuilt for that new version. If something did not change, it won't get rebuilt and one of the design principles of Bosch is that it does a minimal amount of work to deploy the new version of your software. If something did not change, it's not going to get um, updated, restarted, uh, and deployed. Whether you're working on a new deployment or uh, on a completely or, or on, or an existing deployment, the uh, flow every time the same. You create a new version of your release, you upload that version of your release to director, then you can make some changes to your manifest file, and then you would run Bosch deploy. Um, the deployment process will reach out to every node in the existing deployment and try to match its state and uh, its actual state to your, in, to your desired intent and that is declared in your deployment manifest and by your release. Release and deployment manifest are completely declarative. Bosch makes sure uh, of, uh, that um, record of intent matches the actual state of the system. So let's take a look how you can configure release. You can specify a list of properties in, um, in your job manifest file, and then you can reference those properties in your release configuration template. Also, you, you will provide values for those properties in your manifest. These properties uh, will be filled out by Bosch uh, when it's going to process those configuration file templates. So this is how you configure your releases. In case if you want to connect two services together, you can use a links feature. So let's say you have a web server release and your web application needs a database access. So it can define that it needs these database properties. Then your MySQL release, on the other hand, can say that it provides these database properties. So what that means is that if these two jobs are deployed together, Bosch will wire them up automatically, and it will make database properties available to your web server job. So now your web server job can reference those properties in its configuration templates. All right, let's do demo. <laughs> uh, okay, so I have a concourse release deployed, and let's take a look at it. So this is a concourse release. Concourse is a CI system that we use in Cloud Foundry, and you can deploy it with Bosch. 
So it provides uh, source files. As you can see, um, it contains a bunch of uh, Golang packages. So they need to be provided in the source directory. Then it includes packages that specify how to install them. So let's, let, let's take a look at this ATC package. Every package contains a manifest file which specifies what files to include from your source files and also what dependencies need to be provided when this package is going to be compiled. As you can see, this package depends on Golink package and that means that Bosch will first compile Golink package and then provide it uh, to the compilation VM that will uh, install your ATC package. So the important part of the package is a packaging script which defines how to install your software. So you can see here uh, they run some Go build. So basically that tells Bosch how to transform your so software into something that's runnable on Bosch. Then release contains jobs folder. These are different services that you can reference in your manifest and uh, they specify how to run your software. So here, we, uh, every job has a manifest file which defines what packages are included in this job and what properties uh, this job exposes. So what that means is that if you're going to deploy this job, you can configure these pro properties in your deploy manifest. Um, how these properties are being used? They're being used in the configuration file templates that also are included in the job. So here we have this template ATCTL. So let's take a look at it. And you can see how, how here these pro properties are being referenced. So Bosch will fill out the values for these properties that you specified in your manifest during deploy. Then um, also this package here is using links. So it depends on database and it specifies that it consumes database properties. And if it's going to be deployed alongside with your database job, uh, or job that provides a database link, Bosch will make your database job properties available to this package. So let's take a look at this Postgres SQL manifest file. So you can see here, it provides link database with these properties. So now your ATC configuration file templates can use these properties directly in a template. Depending uh, on which platform your release is going to be running, uh, release offers must provide a job supervisor configuration file. So for Linux platform, Bosch is using uh, Monit to supervise running jobs. And release offers might, must include the Monit file. So every Monit file specifies uh, what processes are going to be running as part of this job, how to start and how to stop these processes. So these are uh, how the jobs look like. And here we have also uh, some blobs included in this release just to show you that these are some S3 references. So some binaries or tarballs, they will be downloaded when you're for the first time going to create this release. All right, so maybe let's change our release somehow and redeploy it. So I'm going to show you my running concourse here. So this is a concourse that was deployed before. And let's just add some color to it. So I'm going to add some nice background image. 
So we are updating a source file, which is somewhere here in the source directory. Then I'm going to my uh, concourse release directory. And um, before I start anything, I need to regenerate uh, JavaScript files. Uh, then I'm going to build new version of my release. So let's take a look. I'm going to run Bosch Create Release. Then I'm going to upload this release to director. And then I'm going to run deploy. So as you can see, Bosch figures out that ATC package was changed. And um, it generates a new version of the release. So here, that's a new version of release. And then it's uploading this release to director. And then it's running deploy. So it notices that the only thing that was changed is the release version. And both of these packages depend on the source file that I just changed. So it's going to recompile both of these packages. And then it's going to update the job with the new compiled bits. So while it's doing that, let's take a look how Bosch versions releases. Usually, developers iterate quite a lot on their uh, releases until they're happy with their feature, uh, until it's stable enough, uh, or it passed CI pipeline. Once they're happy with their dev releases, they can mark it as final. And doing so basically applies a different versioning schema to your release and make it available to other people. So if you want to share your release with others, you will share your final release. Uh, others don't see your dev release history, and you can internally iterate on it um, as much as you want. It is guaranteed that uh, the final release will have exactly the same uh, package contents as the dev release it was generated from uh, on every machine, every time. So let's take a look how our deploy is going. So it's still going. Um, so maybe. <laughs> you just couldn't leave it alone, did you? If you were going to bump Bosch to 2.0, you're not allowed to talk. Yeah, you're not allowed. You can tell people. I do have a question, though. Yeah. Um, when you had the, uh, the different uh, shots and stuff showing the different blobs and all that, mm -hmm. and you said they were on S3, how does it know they're on S3 as opposed to wherever else they would be? So there is a configuration also included in your release that specifies the blob store information. Uh, so here I have this final YAML, which contains um, okay, yeah, your blob fine. store. And also, this is where your final releases will, will be stored. So, so where do you put your, uh, like your authentication info? I mean, don't worry about this, but to right. get into S3 and S3. So if you're going to upload them, you would put them in a separate configuration file, which is usually git ignored, yeah. so that you don't accidentally push it. Um, and whenever you're going to update your packages, you will have this file in your release directory. So config final specifies a read-only target, and then you would have a config private.yaml where you would specify your key to be getting on. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, all right, so we got our new version of Concourse deployed. So let's take a look at it. <laughs> So um, it's hard to beat that, but <laughs> uh, I also wanted to show that uh, we can change some properties in our manifest that our release, release exposes. So here we have our job, right, uh, that defines properties that you can configure in your deployment manifest. 
So like this IP port, um, and also like this username and password. So let's maybe add some authentication to our Concord deployment. So I'm gonna modify a manifest file. And I'm gonna specify properties for ATC job here because it exposes those properties. So we're gonna provide username, password, very secure. <laughs> and then I'm gonna run board deploy. And it notices that those properties were changed and let's deploy it. As you can see, it's not recompiling any packages. There were no source file changes. Um, the only thing that was changed is your deployment and uh, what it's gonna do, it's gonna process your configuration templates and provide them to your job and uh, restart the job of the new configuration. So here we go, that was fast. Um, and then let's take a look. Now our pipeline is gone, and it requires us to log in with some basic authentication. Yep, that's one. Um, so you can learn more about Bosch at these resources. We just looked at release engineering process, structure of deployment manifest, um, but there is much more to Bosch. So go to Bosch.io website. You can, um, it's a great source of Bosch documentation. Check out this uh, Bosch tutorial, uh, also good introduction to Bosch. And if you're interested in contributing to Bosch, it's all open source. Go to our GitHub repo and start contributing. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have any other questions? We have a mic here. If we can stand up and ask a question. Any more questions? No? Okay, great. Thank you very much.